Good morning or good evening, depending on the time that you're watching this. Welcome to Crosstown Covenant Church Online. We are so glad you're with us. My name is Angie and I'm the director of youth ministry here. I wanna welcome you to worship by reading a few verses from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a
Today's spiritual practice is going to focus on sharing life with others. 
We live in a time of social distancing and isolation, and it feels particularly important to be intentional about living in community, whether you live alone or whether you live with others. And while it may seem like it's easy to live in community when you live with other people, this is a stressful time and emotions are running high. And oftentimes we can do more to destruct and destroy Christ-like community than create it. So here's what I want you to do with the people that you're living with. Take some time and go around in a circle and rate the last week on a scale of one to 10. 10 being it was a really great week, one being it couldn't have gotten worse. I encourage you not to do fives. Um, tip yourself over on the one end of the spectrum or the other. And after that, share three feelings that you've experienced in the last week, whether it's sadness, anger, disappointment, shame. It's important to listen to how the people around you are doing. And if you want to share more about why you felt those feelings, go ahead and do that. But if you don't feel quite comfortable doing that, that's okay too. And finally, end your time by praying for one another. If you live alone, that's okay. You can still do this. Call a friend or walk down the street to a neighbor's house, ring the doorbell, step six feet back, and maybe have a conversation and take some time to ask someone in your life, how are you really doing, along with the other questions. We look forward to hearing to how it went. Good day. Delighted to be with you. My name is John Jacoby. It's my honor and privilege to serve as lead pastor of Crosstown Covenant Church. Encourage you to stay in the know at Crosstown Life and Events uh, by subscribing uh, through our office to our email publication, Crosstown Connection. Encourage you as well to join us uh, this Sunday today. April 26th at 11 a.m. sharp, we have a congregational meeting and uh, encourage you also to consult your email to learn how to access uh, that gathering. Last week, we began a weekly memory verse, which is going to continue now in an ongoing manner. Uh, did you happen to dive into uh, this week's memory verse, John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. The words of Jesus, John 14, 27, I commend those words to you. I invite you to entrust them into your heart. We want to be in an ongoing way about people who know the word of God uh, in our heads and in our heart and working out through our hands and our feet and our ears by how we live, by how we love, and by how we listen. We look this morning at Psalm 46, Psalms in the middle of the Bible, uh, and we turn to the 46th Psalm and we hear these words. God is our refuge and strength always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of God, the sacred home of our God most high. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed from the very break of day. God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Be still and know that I 
am God. I will be, among, I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the earth. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. The word of the Lord. Amen. It is my view. It is my view that in the words of this book, the whole of human life is comprehended and contained. Nothing to be found in life is omitted from this book. Now those are the words of a person who walked the earth and followed Jesus some time ago, 4th century figure, Athanasius. Athanasius was in the north part of the African continent, particularly uh, Alexandria, Egypt. And as he loved and followed Jesus, there's a picture on the screen. I also commend Athanasius to you. Look at the beard. Uh, incredible piece of artistry there. And as a disciple of Jesus in this quote, Athanasius isn't simply talking about the whole Bible, but a particular book, a particular section within the Bible, particularly the Old Testament book of Psalms, which total 150 songs. And Athanasius is speaking about how this unique part and portion of God's word includes surprising things. There's anger, and there's grief, and there's sorrow, and there's lament, along with joy, along with worship. Psalms has been called the prayer book of the Bible. And today we begin a fresh series, five weeks, we're launching into a journey entitled Praying the Psalms in Crisis. And I've chosen this word crisis for a very distinct reason. Praying the Psalms in crisis. We find ourselves in a moment that's going to define all of our lives. Whether we're young, somewhere in the middle, whether we're a bit more advanced in life. Will we, in this particular season and challenge, will we fall apart? Will our faith fail? Oh, I, I'm sure along the way, for all of us, myself included, that will happen. My faith will fail, and I will fall down. But in a dominant way, will we grow forward? in resilient faith, faith that can bounce back, faith that can move forward as we learn in this season and challenge to go deeper with God in and through Jesus Christ. And my prayer for this series is indeed we will, go, we will grow forward as persons who love God that we will go deeper in calling out to God and crying out to God in conversation with God through this wonderful experience we call prayer that is so wonderfully exhibited and taught through us through this portion of God's word known as the Psalms. So that one day, Years from now, when we look back and, oh, how did it go for you back in 2020? That we might say something like, well, COVID-19 intended it, intended it for evil. But God used that time in my life for good. And in 2020, that was when God drew me nearer to God's self. Our challenge in this series uh, there's a specific spiritual life application, and each psalm, I encourage you to read it uh, in the coming week three times. So uh, Psalm 46, this is day, day one to read that three times uh, a day. 
And also there's going to be from each psalm a memory uh, verse assignment. Encourage you to seek to allow that to sink and to permeate into your heart, to pass through your pores and to entrust it to memory. In Psalm 46, we, we find ourselves presented with a, a song. And note that Psalm 46, along with all of the Psalms, is a poem. And it is a poem with a skeletal structure. We might call it an outline, but I, I want to use the language of it's a skeletal structure which holds together this psalm. It begins with a theme, and then we're going to move to an outcome, a theme, an outcome, a chorus, and a voice. First, the theme, we find it in the first verse. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. I want us just to sit. And to savor those words. Hear them again. God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Those words are an affirmation of faith. In Psalm 46, 1, that verse isn't particularly the memory verse for today. But it, it might well be. What is your worst fear today? Maybe it's a relationship strain. Maybe it's a financial situation and you're not sure how you're going to pay all the bills as they pile up. Maybe you have fear of illness. Note what this psalm says to us, that God is always ready to help. What a good God we know, follow, serve, and worship. Always ready to help. God wants us to know in Psalm 46 that God is greater and beyond any fear we have, any fear we have had, any fear that we will have. Now, this language of God as refuge and strength, uh, Polly lifted up in the children's message. If you haven't seen that yet, I encourage you to look at that video. And we find parallel themes sprinkled throughout the book of Psalms, particularly and succinctly in Psalm 18, Verse 2, we, we have this parallel language. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my savior. God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. Oh, those are good words, again, that affirm and declare our faith. And draw us closer to God through Jesus Christ. The skeletal structure of Psalm 46 begins with a theme. But then note in the second verse it issues forth in an outcome. Because of verse 1, verse 2 says, So we will not fear when the earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. It's a poetic way, a, a metaphor to speak of disaster. And in this language, I, I want to offer an important point of, of clarification. Because there is this idea, this, this theme, this, this understanding that is really harmful. And the narrative says something like, well, because I am a follower of God, that, that God's people are protected, that, that God's people are immune from difficulties, that, that God's people aren't going to endure trouble. And actually, I understand that clearly to be a lie from the enemy, a, a lie from Satan. 
Because if we have that idea that, that no difficulty is going to come to me, then, then when difficulties come, we can tend and quickly conclude, well, God doesn't really care about me. We can conclude, oh, what the Bible says about God as refuge isn't true. So let's be clear that we understand what is going on in this passage. Let's, let's hear the text. The language of Psalm 46 to win. <laughs> they are going to come. Trouble's going to come when the earthquake comes. When the mountains crumble, a metaphorical way of saying when the world falls apart even as we find ourselves living through right now, bad things do happen. Bad things are happening. Bad things are occurring to the people of God. And when this happens, very naturally, when we lose job, when, we, when uh, conflicts emerge in strained relationships, when our own hope in God wavers. The Bible instructs us, note verse 2, when these things happen, we will not fear. We will not fear. And I would have us note the plural here. How important it is that we are part of a faith community. And what a challenge it is in this time of physical distancing that we allow, don't allow that to become a place of spiritual and emotional distancing. How important it is that, that we hear and heed those words, we will not fear, we. So today, after you listen to this, certainly, please, no later than tomorrow, reach out to someone, call them, text them, communicate in some way. And let them know that you care about them, that you're invested in them. And let us also understand in response to this idea that, that bad things don't happen to good people, to God's people, that that's simply not true. Jesus himself, wonderful, helpful words. John 16.33. Jesus, towards the end of his life, as he stood almost face to face with the cross, said, in this world, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, take heart, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. God is greater than any fear we can know. Psalm 46 has a skeletal structure. It begins with a theme. There's an outcome. And then there's a chorus. As I read it, did you hear it? There's, there's a couple of lines in this poem that are repeated. Verse 7 is identical to verse 11. That's what I'm identifying as the chorus. It reads like this, the Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Do you hear the strength we can take from that? No matter how bad it gets. No matter how alone we feel, and many of us are feeling so alone. No matter how overwhelmed we are, with our children at home. No matter if we find ourselves in that horrific situation where a loved one is in the hospital and we are literally separated from them, unable to visit with them. No matter even if that happens, the declaration of Scripture is that we are not alone. We are not alone. 
this week as an encouragement in my own life of faith and seeking to live into and lean into Psalm 46. I've been listening to this song that we sometimes sing at Crosstown, always. Do you know it? The uh, artist is an uh, individual named Christian Stanfill. The song goes like this. My foes are many, they rise against me, but I will hold my ground. I will not fear the war, I will not fear the storm. My help is on the way. My help is on the way. Oh my God, he will not delay my refuge and strength. Hear that parallel language, like as in Psalm 46. My refuge and strength always, I will not fear his promise is true. My God will come through always, always. Psalm 46 has a skeletal structure. It includes a theme, an outcome, a chorus, and lastly and wonderfully, a voice. And here in this psalm, in the midst of the chaos of our lives, in the midst of the extraordinary pandemic of 2020, God speaks to us. It is the words of verse 10. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the earth. That is our memory verse for this week. Be still and know that I am God, it begins. Here in this passage, in the midst of all the upheaval of this psalm, we find the clarion call of God's voice. Two words begin. Be still. That verb, which is God's command to us, can also be translated, defined as to let go, to cease striving. God is saying to us, will you please stop? I hear in the Holy Spirit saying to me in this verse, I am God and you are are not. I am Lord of all people of all nations. Will you please stop? Be still. Cease striving. Now, what a fascinating time in which we find ourselves because we are living in a time literally of forced stillness. Our governor has called us to live out Psalm 46, 10. Be still. Be still. It's been noted that our culture, the United States, in this time in history, is the least contemplative culture in human history. As a people, as a culture, we go and go and go and go and go and go and go. So the question comes to us as we hear God's word, as we live in forced stillness, be still. What might God have for us to learn? In Exodus 14, early in the pages of the Bible, the second book of the Old Testament, Israel is on the exit ramp, having made their way out of Pharaoh's domain and slavery. But suddenly there is a problem. They find themselves between a body of water and no boats and Pharaoh's army. They're stuck between a, a rock and a hard place. And the people cry out to Moses, we knew it. We knew it, Moses. We told you we should have stayed in Egypt Slavery wasn't that bad, even though it was. 
And Moses speaks to the people, Exodus 14, starting in verse 13. Do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Lord will fight for you. And then this phrase, you need only to be still. That word again, same word from Psalm 46.10. You need only to be still. That's what the people of God needed in Exodus 14 to know the strength, power, character, and fortressness nature of God. You need only to be still. Now I confess to you that stillness is my kryptonite. Stillness comes neither easily or naturally for me or to me. Yet I, I've learned an essential spiritual life journey lesson that today God is calling me, God is calling us to be still. God is calling us to listen, to listen to him. To know that our loving God calls us to go further into this love relationship. To love God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. Now there is a distinct spiritual life practice of stillness. The person who's helped me the most with this, I, I speak of her uh, fairly often. Her, her name is Ruth Haley Martin. And uh, Ruth is a, a mentor to me through her uh, speaking and through her writing. And in talking about stillness, there's a couple of wonderful sentences that Ruth has for us. She writes, stillness, which here she's talking in the historic language of the church, solitude. Solitude is an opportunity to interrupt this cycle of our lives of going, 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 going by turning off the noise and stimulation of our lives so that we can hear our loneliness and our longing calling us deeper into the only relationship that can satisfy our longing. And that is the relationship we know through stillness of going deeper with God in and through Jesus Christ. So friends, will you be still this week? To be stillness is not simply to be quiet and watch endless episodes of uh, whatever you're uh, watching. To be still is about an intentional time to be with God. We understand certainly parents of, of children, of young children, this is incredibly challenging. Encourage you parents to support one another. If you're alone as a parent, I, I, pray, I, I pray that God will provide someone to give you some relief that you might even have, maybe it's 15 minutes, <laughs> maybe it can only be five minutes to be still and to know that God is indeed God, that God is God, and that we are not. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. Encourage you to look and to watch uh, this video that has been crafted for us that underscores our memory verse for this week, Psalm 46, verse 10. Amen.
encourage you to ponder the following questions as you seek to process and engage the Holy Spirit with today's message. Specifically, what time will you set aside this week to intentionally be still and be with God? A second question, and these are also on the worship notes that uh, you can uh, receive from the email that you've received. What has COVID-19 taken away from you? Be honest. Express your grief and your pain and your anger to God. We see this in the Psalms. Question two, what has COVID-19 taken away from you? And then on the other side, to reflect on the question in time of stillness with God, how has COVID-19 blessed your life? And what is happening in your life that is new and fresh that you would not have experienced because of this season of forced stillness? Encourage you to ponder those questions. And as we conclude worship this day, want to underscore the importance uh, that the scripture calls us as part of offering ourselves to God to uh, join in financial giving to continue to support the ministry of Crosstown. Hebrews 13 says, Do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Encourage you to continue to give online to Crosstown uh, through the website. Uh, there's a tab there for giving or to send your gifts uh, by the mail. We celebrate the giving of the last couple of months to community emergency services. Uh, that dear organization and food shelf took all that we uh, put together uh, this, this year, and it totaled up, the tally is 606 pounds of stuff, uh, which is great. And a lot of that, we had an incredible amount of toilet paper. Uh, so that can bless those who are needy. And we thank you for partnering in uh, with us as we partner with our friends at Community Emergency Services. That 606 pounds compares, for the record, to the 674 pounds we had last year. So it was pretty equivalent. And friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may you know and live in the peace of God. Amen. Pastor John referenced this song always during his message this morning. Let us join together in worship and sing this song before we end our time here today. My foes are many, they rise against me, but I will hold my I will not fear the war, I will not fear the storm, my help is on the way, my help is on the way. Oh my God, you will not delay, my refuge and strength always. and strength. 
my eyes up. I lift my eyes up. My help comes from the Lord. I lift my join us next week.